but I hope will mean greener pastures. Uh, I sure wish you'd give up selling that phony stock. And I wish you'd forego that attitude of annoyance and take a look around. Perhaps in this motley cargo, there might perchance be a bit of foodstuff. How do you like that? Of all the trains, we have to pick one with a man-eating tiger on it. Looks like there ain't nothing much here but these potatoes. Oh, scare me, will you? Have a potato, big shot. Now, 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 take it easy, Spike. I hate tigers. Yes, I can readily understand your aversion to stripes. Now, quiet, 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 boy. So, your name is Roger, and you're headed for the Birkenwald Circus. You know, Spike, our accidental visit to the temporary abode of this jungle beast might mean opportunity knocking at our door. I'll have you understand that we are the custodians of Russia, the tiger. Don't say nothing in here about somebody being with that there tiger. Young man, don't you know the law? Section 12, Article 9, forbids the transportation of a wild animal without proper surveillance. That's a new one on me. Well, I won't report you this time, but don't let it happen again. Yes, sir. All right, fellas, let's get that cat on the wagon. It's obvious from your dignified manner and air of authority that you are the owner of the Burke and Walsh Circus. Well, thank you, sir, but I'm just the boss canvasman. Oh. The boss is standing over there by that three-seated surrey. Oh, thank you, my good man. Come, Spike, come. All right, buddy, back it up. Ah, Mr. Burke, it's been a long time. I'm sorry, I'm not Mr. Burke. Of course, how stupid. Mr. Walsh. Wrong again. My name's Champion, Tim Champion. I bought out Burke and Walsh a couple of seasons ago. Well, you're just the man I'm looking for, sir. I am Major Buffington. And this, uh, uh, this gentleman here is Spike Marlin. How do you do? What can I do for you? Well, we were wondering if you had an opening for a couple of old circus hands. Oh, you were with Garber Brothers. Uh, 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 yes, sir. Uh, oh, yeah. The Garber Brothers. Yes. You happen to know them, sir? That's who I bought Roger from. Too bad they went out of business. Yes, yes, it put a lot of us out of work. I'm pretty well lined up right now. What do you fellas do? Well, I, uh, <laughs> I hate to boast, sir, but I have the reputation of being the best ballyhoo barker that ever ran a grind show on a carney. That's fine. What do you do? Ooh, hey, yes, sir. Uh, well, Spike, I, uh, uh, the Spike's the finest all-around man in the business. <laughs> I guess I can use you both. Uh, you won't be sorry, sir. Well, as long as you're going to be with us, you might as well meet the real boss of the show, Corky. How do you do? <laughs> if you'll wait here till I get through picking up the mail, you can ride in with us. Why, thank you, thank you. <laughs> I'll be here with him. Okay, boss. <laughs> Is uh, that your father? No, my Uncle Joy takes care of me. Oh. Hi. Hi. You been with the circus long, son? Well, all my life. Oh, long time, huh? Yeah, but I still didn't understand some of those words you used. What's a carny and a grind show? <laughs> Well, a carny son is a carnival. And a grind show is a show that runs on all day long. But I quit the carnival, though. I was stuck on the bearded lady, you see. And, and one day she ran away with a razor salesman. <laughs> <laughs> Order, arm, parade, rep. That's pretty good. Where'd you learn that? The Major's been teaching me. I didn't know he was ever in the Army. Sure, that's where he got his title. He was made a major when he was only 18. Really? He got his commission when he fought under Stonewall Jackson at Fort Sumter. Are you sure that's what he said? No, 
I'm sure. Well, then the Major better get his facts straight, because at that time, Fort Sumter happened to be under the command of General Beauregard. Not according to the Major. Well, maybe not, but that's the way it was according to history. Now, maybe you better read up on it. Then if he gets mixed up again, you can straighten him out. Do you suppose that history could be wrong sometimes? <laughs> well, it could happen. Hurry, hurry, hurry! The big show's just about to start. Step up and buy your tickets right away. Only 25 cents, only a quarter of a dollar. Hurry, hurry, hurry! See the greatest assembly of wild animals ever gathered together since Noah's Ark. Thrill at the daring death doings of the acrobats and laugh with the world's funniest, funniest clowns. Hurry, 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 my friends. Hurry, little girl. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hey, he's doing all right. Two hours of entertainment for only 25 cents. It's educational, recreational, it's sensational. Hurry. <laughs> That's enough of that. What's the matter with you? I'm sick of playing nursemaid to this man-eater. That's what's the matter with me. Why don't we, why don't we knock off the box office tonight and get out of here? I counted the house today. I doubt if they took in a hundred dollars. That's better than nothing, ain't it? Say, if we're going to stoop to such petty thievery, let us at least wait until the returns are more lucrative. Yeah, but when? In a few days, we play Capital City. I understand they sit them on the grass there. Sit them on the grass? Yeah, just pack them in. So we we'll wait till then. Here comes the kid. Hold it, hold it. Hello, Cocky. How'd you like my spiel today? Real good. Well, it wasn't good enough, I guess. We didn't do much business. Oh, but we will when we leave Capital City. Well, that's nice. <laughs> You know, if things don't get better, I'm afraid I might lose my job. Mr. Champion wouldn't let you go. He likes you. Oh, he does? So do I. Got your money's worth when you got that Raja Tiger. Yeah, he's working out fine. I'd say that trainer of yours does a real good job. Yeah, she's in great form today. Mr. Buffington, have you ever worked with tigers? No. Oh, that's one thing I don't care about. <laughs> Come here. Come around. Come around a little bit. Come around a little bit. Come around a little bit. No, 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 no. That's all right. You worked pretty well today. See that he gets some extra meat tonight. Sure. Hey, hold it, hold it. What's the matter with you? You better get yourself another boy to take care of that cat. Him and me don't get along too well. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, uh, Spike's a little nervous around tigers. He got quite a mauling from one a few months ago. Oh, I see. Well, from now on, you can help out with the horses. Bad news from Capital City. Why, some other outfit get there ahead of us? No, Mayor Humphrey refuses to grant us the license. Why? Well, the local town people figure that searches take too much money out of the town. So they got the city council to vote an ordinance against it. Oh, that's great. Well, there's no use worrying about it. We'll have to fill those three days someplace else. Hey, Spike. Take care of Pete's horse, will you? Come on, Pete. We'll go look at a map. Wait till we get to Capital City, huh? 
I got it. I have got it. All right, what is it? We don't have to settle for peanuts. We'll play Capital City. <laughs> what about the mayor? I'll handle the mayor myself, along with my little buddy. Who, me? No. A little orphan lad named Corky. <laughs> But I distinctly told you in advance, man, there isn't the slightest chance of a circus playing Capital City. I understand your motives, Your Excellency, and I think you're most honorable. But you should hear what I'm going to say, uh, being such an open-minded man. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. And I, uh, I want you to meet my little friend, uh, Corky. Corky? Yeah, Corky is an orphan. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. Yes, but Corky has a wonderful family now. The circus people. And the owner of the circus, Mr. Champion. He's not satisfied with just making one orphan happy. So every season, he always plays one town, and he turns over half the proceeds to the local orphanage. Well, that's very magnanimous, but I'm afraid that... Uh... Uh, Mr. Champion had several cities in mind, but I talked him into letting my own hometown, Capital City, have the honor. This is your hometown? Why, surely, sir, you must remember me. One of your most ardent supporters at the last election. Why, sir, you remember that night you made that wonderful speech at the... Uh, uh, the town hall? Exactly. And you were... you were... I was fighting to have the garbage dump moved outside the city limits. That's it, sir. And I was proud of you. Proud of you. A man who wanted the children of his community to grow up hearty and healthy, away from the disease of the trash dumps. And that's why I know that you'll stand behind these little orphans. Well, I'd like to, but... Uh... And don't forget, sir, the orphans of today are the voters of tomorrow. You're right. The orphans deserve all they can get. But the town council... Don't forget that they, too, need votes. That's a very good point. Yeah. You may tell Mr. Champion that I accept his offer. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Glad to do it, my boy. You're going to make a lot of orphans very happy. Yes, this should make for a lot of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Pete really believes in doing his part for charity, huh? He's not the only one. You know, even after donating half the proceeds to the orphan's home, we'll still make twice as much as I thought we'd make. Uh, that was a great idea, the Major's all right. You know, I was a little leery of the Major at first, but I guess I was wrong. I was, too. <laughs> I'm beginning to think Corky's the only one around here can judge character. <laughs> you know, Spike, these last few days have been quite beyond my fondest expectations. Yeah, but I don't get it. If the circus gets half and then the charity gets the other half, where do we come in? We come first. Don't forget, charity begins at home. And who needs it more than we two orphans of the road? <laughs> we take it all, huh? That's my intention, yes. Yeah. Yeah, how do we get it? Well, during the performance, the uh, proceeds will be taken over to Pete in the white wagon. And at the proper moment, I will tell Pete that Mr. The champion wants to see him at the big top. He leaves the money with us, and uh, we leave with the money. I can hardly wait. Yeah. You know, sometimes I wonder if I'm not in the wrong business. Can you think of a better one? Well, at the moment, no. Ah, here comes the mayor. <laughs> Oh, Major, there you are. We've been looking all over for you. Uh, you uh, were? Yes, uh, Major Buffington. This is Mr. Little. He's the director of the orphanage. How do you do, sir? I hope everything's satisfactory. Overwhelmed. That's why we were looking for you. Uh, yeah, we want to make you a little present in appreciation of all you've done for us. Well, that's uh, very kind of you, gentlemen, but uh, nothing of value, of course. No, no, it's just a scroll with all the names of the town council. Yeah, we'll present it to you in the big tent tonight after we receive the money. <laughs> You're, uh, getting the money in the, uh, big top? Yeah, it's more colorful that way. <laughs> you know, we use showmanship in politics, too, you know. <laughs> big show is now going on. Only 
a few seats left, folks. Hurry! Might as well knock it off, Major. We couldn't get another customer in there with a shoehorn. Oh, I'm sorry. You're We're all sold out, folks. It's too bad, too bad. <laughs> I was just getting warmed up. <laughs> You've done a great job with this benefit, Major, and Joey and I both want you to know how much we appreciate it. Well, uh, anything for the orphans. I sure had you tab wrong, Major. You're even better than Corky said you were. <laughs> hey, Pete, take the money over to White Wagon. I'll sure do it for you, boss. Thank you. <laughs> you figured out a way to grab that dough yet? I, I don't see how we can now. What do you mean? We crack this Mr. Little over the head and we take it. I told you I don't go in for that rough stuff. Now, wait a minute. You ain't worried about hitting this guy over the head. You're worried about taking that dough, ain't you? Come on, don't be ridiculous. I'm wise to you. Just because they toss you a few bouquets, you, you, you turn it soft on me, is that it? Spike, you don't know what you're talking about. I think that I thought that you were smart. What do you think, you're going to be a hero to these yokels? <laughs> I wonder what these good, righteous people would do if they knew about that swindle you pulled in Kansas City last year, huh? Uh, they, they'd probably turn me in. Yeah, and I guarantee you they're gonna know about it if you don't snap out of it. All right, we'll do it your way. <laughs> That's better. Oh, Major Buffington! This this is Davy, and this is Coco from the orphanage. Well, how do you do, children? My, what have we here? A doorstop. Oh, just what I've always wanted. Kids at the orphanage donated it to you. Well... <laughs> you can't have it. First, I need to make a speech. Oh, I see. Well, go all right ahead, Davy. Uh, here's a present, Mr. Bluffton. To thank you for the new bed and clothes and, and books. Now you can have it. Uh. Well, thank you, thank you very much, children. <laughs> Major Bluff, can I have a mama doll? We don't know yet, Coco. Can I please have it? We'll see, Coco. Now you run right along and be a good little girl. Come on, I'll give you kids a ride on Bimbo Jr. <laughs> now, what are you going to do with that? I'm going to exchange it for some money. I got a little present for you. Oh, all right, just a moment. Oh, oh, isn't that nice? I is that for me? I'm giving it to you for the orphans. We'll take the money. Oh. How do you like that sneaky little rat? He was carrying a gun. Well, hurry up, hurry up, get the horses. Right. before Mr. Little's ready, will you? Right. Now, Mr. Big Shot, you're gonna do me a real big favor. Excitement. I had to let that tiger out. They were coming at to take the money. Why, you blockhead? What about those poor little kids? Come back for the money. Hey, boss, look! Take it easy, boy. Roger. Keep the 
that torch of Pete. He got out. Outside, man, quick. Spread out, man. We've got to find him. Right on the net, Jack. Children, come on, come on, quick. Get to the wagons. Rouse of the tigers. He's me that money. <laughs> hurry up, children. Hurry up, hurry up. Jack, get a duck. Mr. Champion! Mr. Champion! Mr. Champion! Oh, oh, you caught him, eh? Yeah, the excitement's all over. We'll have Raja back in his cage in no time. Oh, I don't mean the, the tiger. I mean Major Buffington and his pal here. They, they tried to steal our money. What? Major Buffington wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, uh no. -huh. He is probably right there, in that, in that briefcase. Well, there's nothing in here but this old door stuff. Him. If you look at Mr. Champion safe, you'll find the money safe and sound. So you double-crossed me. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's the only thing I could do, Spike. I couldn't let you run out with the kid's money. Looks like we've only got one crook, Mr. Little. Yeah, and please keep me here till I get back with the sheriff. That's right. Get the sheriff. There's a story about Kansas City I'm sure he'd like to hear about. You won't need to, Spike. I'm going back and finish that deal myself. Can't you stay here with us, Major? No, Corky. This is a very important deal. I should have taken care of it a long time ago. Well, how long will you be? Oh, maybe a year, maybe less. Uh, I mean, if things go right. Come back when you're finished, Major. There'll always be a job waiting here for you. Fine, fine. Here, Corky, you take this dollar, and you see that Coco gets her mama doll. I'll take that. <laughs>